Hello everyone from Math 2200, Discrete Mathematics. It's uh, Professor Wenson here again with a video on your Zybooks, section 3.5, titled Set Identities. So you're going to see that this section is uh, very similar to a section from chapter 1 where you had to show that two um, that two statements were logically equivalent. Remember all those laws of propositional logic from chapter one, um, like De Morgan's law and stuff like that. Uh, those are coming back here, but in relation to sets and when two sets are equal. So you'll see that here. So set identities. Uh, the set operations intersection, union, and complement are defined in terms of logical operations, right? They're very similar to operations we saw back in chapter 1. All the elements are assumed to be contained in a universal set U. Right. So these two statements have the same meaning, right? Notice the double arrow, the, you know, the, double uh, the biconditional arrow here. So if an element x belongs to A and B, A intersect B, that means exactly the same thing as x belongs to A and, right, the conjunction operation and x belongs to B. Uh, x belonging to A union B means exactly the same thing as the statement x belongs to A or, and that's remember the inclusive or, the disjunction, x belongs to b. So that's x belongs to a or b or both. And then if x is an element of the complement of a, right, not a, that means exactly the same thing as the negation of x belongs to a or x does not belong to a. Okay. Uh, the universal set and the empty set correspond to the constants true and false, right? Like, they're, they're, they're basically like everything belongs to the universal set, right? So an element belonging to the universal set will be a true statement. And nothing belongs to the empty set, right? So saying that an element belongs to the empty set would be a false statement, and that's what these are saying right here. So uh, the laws of propositional logic can be used to derive corresponding set identities. Right. A set identity is an equation involving sets that is true regardless of the contents of the sets in the expression. Right. So e every element in one set is the same as the elements in the other set, right? If two sets are equal. The idea is similar to an equivalence in logic, which holds regardless of the truth values of the individual variable in the expressions. Right? We've seen how to show that two statements were logically equivalent using propositional laws. Now we're doing the same for showing that two sets are equal. So you can read through this here. Um, this is actually uh, to show De Morgan's law for sets showing that, well actually no, I'll write this one out. All right, I'll write this one out and show you how to determine, you know, is this a true statement involving some laws of uh, propositional logic. All right, so here's the statement in that activity. You know, this is, this is again, this is called De Morgan's Law. It might look similar to De Morgan's Laws for propositions. This is, I have A intersect B, but I'm taking the complement. Remember, the complement is like negating and uh, A intersect B is like having A and B. And if you recall De Morgan's Law with propositions, when you negate an AND statement, it becomes an OR statement with the negations. So the same thing goes for sets. It's, it's, it's amazing how that works out, and I'll show, you, I'll show you how to show that in a second. So if I, take, uh, if I take two sets and intersect them, and then I look at the complement of that intersection, It'll be the same exact set, it'll be equal to the intersection of A union 
intersection of B, right? The symbol flips and I negate each one separately. <clears throat> so how do I show this? What we're going to do is we're going to show that every element of this set is also an element of this set and vice versa. Every element of this set is an element of this set. goes in both directions. Right? So I'm going to let say x be some element of the left set. A, you know, intersect B, complement. Right. And then, you know, what does that mean? I, you know, I had those the, in, earlier in the text, that same section here, section 3.5, they had this, you know, this biconditional statement. What does it mean to be in the complement of a set? That means that it is not true, right, the negation that X is in A intersect B. Right. That if, if I say X is an element of this left set, the complement of A intersect B, that just means that X does not belong to A intersect B. So it is not true, the negation of X belonging to A intersect B. Right. And then we saw also what does it mean for an element, a number, uh, an element to belong to the intersection of two sets? And that was also a biconditional. So, so saying this is equivalent to, and you know, I still have this negation here. And then here, saying that x belongs to a intersect b is the same as saying that x belongs to a. And remember the little conjunction symbol of the logic, x belongs to b. And what I have here now is something I can apply De Morgan's law to. This is the negation of an and statement. So this is logically equivalent to, right, has the same meaning as, and I guess I should say is logically equivalent to, but you know, with the whatever. The negation, you know, not belonging to A, uh, you know, the negation of X belongs to A or the negation of x belongs to b. All right, and again, that was, I, I guess I should also be writing reasons for all this stuff, but this is De Morgan's, right? I just used De Morgan's law. All right, and then what does it mean? Again, uh, this is equivalent to saying, I mean, it has the same meaning both ways. What does it mean to say that not x belongs to a? That means that x belongs to a complement or and what does it mean to say that you know not x belongs to b that's x belongs to b complement right. so it means to not belong to a or not belong to b and then this last one here when i say x belongs to not a or x belongs to not b that means that x belongs to the union of not A and not B. So you see what I've done here. I've shown you, I have just shown you that every element of this left set through all these steps here is also an element of that set on the right and vice versa. You could just go backwards with this as well. That's why I got all the, the biconditionals. But you need to show, you know, you show it in both directions. Every element of the left set is also an element of the right set and every element of the right set is also an element of the left set. All right, so we have just shown here that this will be true for any sets. This is called a set identity. This is true for any sets A and B. The, the complement of their intersection will be the union of their complements. Right, and that's, a, again, a version of De Morgan's laws for sets. All right, so going back to the page, and again, you can watch the animation. Uh, it, we get into these. Here's a bunch of other. Now, I'm not going to go over doing what I did here uh, on the paper. I'm not going to do this for all these. These are all uh, laws for sets, set identities. And look at the names of them. You have seen these names before. These are the same names that were given to the laws of propositional logic back in chapter one. 
So we can use these. All right? um, so I'll, I'll just read through them and I'll just explain them a little bit. I'm not going to write them out. All right? So the item potent laws, basically you don't have to repeat yourself. You know, if, if A union A is just A or if, for any set A. A intersect A is just A. Uh, union and intersections are associative, right? So may, that means if you have a string of unions, see A, union B, union C like this, it doesn't matter which pair you do first. You could do A, union B first, then union C, or B, union C first, then union A, and you'll get the same set. Same thing goes for intersections. If you have a big string of intersections, you know, like A intersect B intersect C, it doesn't matter what two you do first. You'll get the same result. That's the associative law. You have your commutative laws. A union B is the same set as B union A. Same thing for intersections. A intersect B is the same set as B intersect A. Uh, you have the distributive laws. It's just like the distrib again. These are all the same as like when you had the and and the or, right? Dis disjunctions and conjunctions with logic. You can distribute unions over intersections, or you can distribute intersections over unions. So a union and then the quantity b intersect c is equivalent. Is the same set as a union b intersect a union c. And it goes backwards too. You can also do some factoring. You know, if you notice you have A union intersect A union, you can pull that A union out. And then A intersect B union C is A intersect B union A intersect C and, and vice versa. You can also go backwards and do something like factoring if you think about it that way. Uh, identity laws. A union the empty set is A. So remember, any set inter you, if you just you know put on you know remember the empty set has no elements, so doing a union with the empty set doesn't add anything. So you're still with it. you still have a. A intersect with the universal set right with everything is just a. Right? The only elements that they would all they would both share are the elements in a. Uh, domination laws. A intersect the empty set is just the empty set because remember the empty set has nothing so there are no elements that these have in common then right so the intersection would be the empty set so any set intersected with the empty set is the empty set and then any set union with the universal set is the universal set right everything uh, the double negation or double complement law so the complement of the complement of A is just A itself. So double negation, double complement. Uh, complement laws, A intersect A complement is empty. Because remember, the complement of A has all the elements that aren't in A. So A and A complement don't share any elements. So their intersection is empty. And the complement of the universal set is the empty set. Right? The opposite of having everything in it is having nothing in it. Then a union a complement would be everything. Because you're either in A or you're not in A. Right? That would be a union. And the complement of the empty set is the universal set. I've already shown you one of De Morgan's laws here. Uh, that was this one. It was the if I do the, the complement of an intersection, I get the union of the complements. And the other way around too, it's uh, you know the, the complement of a union is the intersection of the complements. And then absorption laws, uh, A union, A intersect B is just A. And if you want to make like Venn diagrams to show this too, you can. Uh, a intersect a union B is again just A. Right. Again, I could do I could do the little proofs thing like I showed you on the paper from the for the De Morgan's law, or I could draw a little Venn diagram to kind of give you a picture as to what's going on. But uh, but a Venn diagram is not a proof. All right. All right. So let's look at these. 
and see, you know, apply the laws to these statements. So here I have the empty set intersected with the set B union C. So remember this law here, the domination law. If you intersect any set with the empty set, you're getting the empty set. So that first one would result in nothing, a set with nothing in it. How about B union the empty set? Remember, when you, that's one of those identity laws. If you you're not going to be adding anything, so you just be have, you'll just have set B there. B union B complement. That's everything. That's the entire universal set. Right? That was this uh, com complement law here. So that would result in the universal set, right? the set with everything in it. This is one of them absorption laws, you know, C union and then C intersected with some other set. See the repetition of C here? Uh, that would just be set C. That was one of, the, that was one of these absorption laws it would result in set C. And then that double complement law or double negation, right? the complement of the complement of B union C it would just be B union C. So again, hopefully all that made sense. And like, again, hopefully these laws look incredibly similar to what you saw in law, you know, the laws of propositional logic. All right. Very, very similar. And so I can use these when showing that two sets are indeed equal. All right. And I'll and I'll do an example of that here coming. Right. So. The first, ex right, so I will actually do one of these because I haven't shown you. Uh, they don't have any for some reason. They don't have any any activities where you're using these or stating these laws. So I want to show you one example. So you got the additional exercises. Again, some of these are on your assignment four. Some are not. I would still recommend doing all of them, you know, just for extra practice. Uh, I do want to show you one of these. Right. So in exercise three five two, it says you know proving. Proving set identities. Now, proving set identities is basically, like I said earlier, basically like showing that two statements are logically equivalent. All right. So I start with one side, and through the use of these laws, right, and you might have to refer back to this table here a lot, through the use of these laws, show that indeed this set on one side is equal to the set on the other side. All right, so for instance, I'll take part E here. All right. um, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll do part E and show you what I mean by proving set identities. Okay. So my example here, so proving a set identity, I'm, uh, okay, I'm just going to do the one. And it's where you, you know, do statements and reasons, and we're just going to keep using those laws. Right, and I'll name them as I use them. So we're asked to show that the complement of A union the intersection of A and B is the same set is equal to the complement of A union B, and this is for any sets A and B. Right, so just like you know are showing that two statements are logically equivalent back in chapter one. I start with one side. So I start with say a the the complement. Uh, the, I'll start with like what seems to be the more complicated side. So the left side here, and then we'll do you know through a series of use, uses of these laws, these set identities. I'm going to use the laws to eventually change it and sh you know, eventually show you that we're equal to the other side, equal to the set on the other side. So I start with the left side here. Again, it doesn't have to be the left side, just again, the more complicated side. And uh, one thing I'm seeing is I can use the distributive property here. Right? This is a union over an intersection. So this should be equivalent to you know, the A intersect, uh, I'm sorry, the complement of A union A intersected with, and then the complement of A union B. Okay, and that was the, uh, I used distributive law there. All right. well, let's put distributive. 
Now look at this. This complement of A union B, that's what I eventually want to end with. Alright, so I'm gonna kinda I'm just gonna leave this alone for now. And look here, I have the complement of A union with A. Now technically, you know, to use the law in the exact order that it was written, see I have you know A union, the complement of A is the universal set. They have the regular uh, set first and then the complement. So technically I should do this. I should switch the order of these so it's in the, it's 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 reflecting the law. So remember there's a, a commutative property. This is equivalent to you know A union A complement and again I'm leaving this other one alone intersected with A complement union B. And all I did was switch the order in that union, right? And there was that, uh, uh, com that was the commutative property, right? Or commutative law. Right. Right. Now I can apply that um, complement law, right? A union A complement is the universal set. Right. So I'm, I'm using U as the universal set. And you, know, you intersect this A complement union B. And that was one of those complement laws that I just applied. And then finally here, if you're intersecting a, any set with the universal set, you get that one set back. Now again, technically I should switch these, but let me show you that. Remember, the, the intersection of a set with the universal set is the set A itself. So I'm just, that's one of those, that's that identity, one of the identity laws. So this is equivalent to just the complement of A union B, right, this set here. Because any set intersected with the universal set will be that set. And that was one of those identity laws. All right, and I'm done. And maybe I'll even put the little box. I know this usually ends up proof. And this is kind of like a proof. You know, statement, reason, statement, reason, and all that. Uh, just not written out in full sentences. And there, I've shown you that this set on the left will be equivalent, is equivalent to this set on the right. So no matter what sets A and B are, they would be the same, they'd have the same elements. Right. Now, another thing you could do, just to, now this wouldn't be a proof, but just to make make yourself believe in the, in the identity. You know, do you believe it's true uh, before you start proving it? Uh, we could look at some Venn diagrams. So I'll say you could use Venn diagram. Uh, that's an A. Venn diagrams to test. And the Venn diagrams don't actually prove anything. They just, they just test your test your belief. Is this a true statement? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw up here a Venn diagram, and we'll do I'll do several. All right, now this represents you know the universal set that's everything U, and the only sets mentioned here are A and B. So I'll draw these sets A and B so that they overlap. So I have a set A uh, and a set B, and just have it so that they actually overlap. Right. And then I'm going to highlight some stuff in different colors. So first I'll do a, a Venn diagram for the left set. All right, this A complement union A intersect B. All right, so I'll do A intersect B in this pinkish color, right, and that would be here. All right, that's A intersect B. I did the thing in parentheses first. And I'll do the complement of A in like this bluish color. Now the complement of A is everything outside of A. That's you know that's in the universal set. So everything outside of A, outside that circle with A. Okay. And then we're doing the you know, so the blue and the pink. Just put them together because we're doing the union. All right. So I'll just really deeply purple color that. So all the blue and all the pink stuff belongs to this because it is the union. So I've got 
this and this, all right, the overlap, all this, all this. All right, so there, I have just made a Venn diagram where I highlighted everything in this set. All right, so this, this Venn diagram is for A complement union A intersect B. So notice it's everything except for the stuff that's in A but not in B, right? And step, this is the this is A minus B basically. So we could also show that this is in, this is the complement of A minus B, but uh, that's for another that's for another picture. Now I'll make another Venn diagram. All right, this this was for the left side of the equation right, that I just did this side here. Now I'll do another Venn diagram for the right side and see if we get the same shading. Again, it's not a proof, it just gives me a good idea as if they're, if, if they're the same. So this box represents the universal set. And again, I'll have a set A. I'll try to draw a similar picture to what I have here and a set B that overlaps it. Just some general sets A and B. And now, when I do this, this right side, all right, so set B, I'll do with the pinkish color. So here's set B, right, everything in the B circle. Right. And then set, you know, the other set up, up, up here is the complement of A, which I'll do in a bluish color. Now again, the complement of A is everything outside A. Right, everything outside A, outside that A circle. Okay. And then we're taking the union of these two sets. So let's put them together. So it's again, it's all this blue, all this stuff outside A, and also all the pink. So you got the overlap and this pink area here. So I'm going to darken it in this area. All this, where there, wherever there's a color, wherever there's blue and pink, right? We're doing the union. So all this stuff right, would be in the inter, uh, the union of the complement of A with B. All right, so I just did a Venn diagram for the uh, the right side, the complement of A with B, and look at the, look at the shading. Look at this; they're the same. They're the same. They're the same picture. So I do believe that this is correct. All right. So now looking at these pictures, I, I believe these are correct. These are actually equal. And then I would go about proving it, right, using our laws. Right. So yeah, this never hurts. Right. And if there was a third set, a uh, set C, I'd put a set C in here so that it overlapped everything else too. And Try to make your Venn diagrams. Again, Venn diagrams are just a guide. They are just a test of the statement. They do not prove the statement. Right, you have to do that with your laws or statements and reasons. Okay? All right, so that's just one example. And you know, you'll have others in your assignment four. And uh, that's, that's all I got for you for today for section 3.5 on set identities. And uh, you know, when you're going through these, you can look at the solutions. Please, I say this every time, try to do the problems first before you look at the solutions. Because if you're just copying down solutions and not trying, you're not going to learn anything. And you're going to have a rough time on the exams that I write for you. So hopefully this uh, video helps for 3.5. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much for watching.